Well, BookTube, this is <laughs> a video number three for the last day of February 2018. I'm on a roll here. Uh, I just, I think I'm hyperactive. I have to get my cup of tea. Wait a minute. It's an Irish, Irish breakfast tea. Uh, yeah, well, it's kind of like, hey, I'm by myself here. Uh, I'm going kind of crazy. Uh, I was reading this evening some more of the diaries of Emilio Reze by Richard. This is the formative years. The diaries of em Emilio Renzes, the formative years. This is supposed to be like a three volumes are going to be published. The first volume has been published by Ricardo Piccolele, 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 Piccolele. But this video is is I, I don't like having books all around me. I like to put them where they're supposed to be. Now you might think I'm kind of. I'm not telling the truth because I got books everywhere, but I got out this evening my books on the, the life and theology of the Apostle Paul. And I was trying to think about when I really start just listening and listening to the Apostle Paul without filtering him through my reform Calvinistic theology. And it must have been, well, we've lived here in Holland. We moved up here 27, 28 years ago. It must have been maybe 12, 15 years ago. I haven't gone to church in at least 12 years. And I was really getting into the Apostle Paul 12. It's been about 13, 14 years. Before that, as I've said, I read systematic theology. I read Reformed theology all the time. I read the Puritans all the time. And then when I was, we were going to a small independent Dutch Reformed church here in this area, I started teaching the Bible to the adults. And because I really wanted to get into the Bible, I was tired of. I, I when I was I was teaching systematic theology when I we first. But when we start this church, I taught systematics. But I got when I was teaching it, I had this one time. Where I realized that the system of theology that I was teaching, was man-made. It had limits. It's kind of like it was an enclosed system. Uh, and that there was so much that was unknown about God. There, there's, we can know, we can know God, we can know God through His Word, through the Bible, the Holy Scriptures. But there comes a point where we reach unknowing. <laughs> where we realize that what we do know is finite. It's true knowledge, but it's not exhaustive. So then I just wanted to, to teach the Bible. And so I taught the Bible for 10 years. And then, as I've mentioned, I had, as I got more and more into the Bible, I realized I didn't agree with the church anymore. I didn't agree with Reformed Covenantal Theology. And that was through reading the, the life and teachings of the Apostle Paul. Because I realized that even though the church, Reformed churches, claim that they have, that they're teaching the doctrines of the Apostle Paul, like justification by faith, and but there was so much that was not being taught that was being muted by their system of theology. So, 
How I really got into the Apostle Paul was studying intensely for many years the Epistle to the Romans and the Epistle to the Galatians over the whole issue between law and grace. But as I was reading and studying the theology of the Apostle Paul, I, can, I come to see his humanity, that he was truly, you know, he, as you read his letters in the New Testament, there's, he is so human. His frailty, his humanity shines through in his, throughout his ministry as the apostle who was called of God to declare the, the glory and the beauty and the riches of Christ to the gospel of God. So these are some of the books that I would recommend on the Apostle Paul. Uh, I mentioned the N.T. Wright. This is the new one I got in the mail the other day. N.T. Wright, Paul, a, a, a biography. He also published these massive work that I showed a couple of, couple of videos ago, Paul and the Faithfulness of God, volumes one and two. So these kind of should be read together. Like I noticed when I got this Paul, a biography, there's no footnotes. There's no bibliography. All he does, it's just a straight biography. It's not really, doesn't have footnotes. It doesn't have a bibliography. It, it doesn't have any any of that apparatus to it. So it's good to read these along with this. So that's that. And then I haven't read this one, but I have bought it. It's Paul the Apostle, The Triumph of God, Enlightened Thought by J. Chris, Christiana Beaker. It's kind of famous work. I have read this one, Paul's Narrative Thought World by Ben Whittington III, The Tapestry and Tragedy of Triumph. Uh, I have read this. I've read many of Ben Whittington's commentaries, his books. He's really worth reading. He, he's, uh, he's not in the reform camp, but he's a good scholar. This one I keep in my study is just a basic one on re rediscovering Paul introduction to his world letters and theology by David B. Capps, Rodney Reeves, and E. Randolph, Randolph Richards. I keep this in my main study. It's a good little book. This one I have read and I reread it and reread it and reread it. Paul, the Apostle of God's Glory in Christ. A Pauline Theology by Thomas R. Schneider. Schneider wrote a, uh, a, a good bio, uh, good commentary in the Epistle of Romans that I recommend. This book I've reread and reread and reread. It's one of my favorite books on the Apostle Paul and his theology. It's called Paul, Apostle of Liberty, The Origin and Nature of Paul's Christianity by Richard N. Lawnecker. I highly recommend this. This is a good one too. It, it's not, it's kind of in the middle as far as, I don't know, it's worth reading. Paul, this is kind of, I've read this a couple of times. Paul, the Apostle Paul, His Life and Theology by Udo Chanel, translated by M. E. Boring. I keep this in my main study and I refer to it all the time. This one I also use as a reference. I haven't read it from cover to cover, but it's worth having. He also has written many books on the theology of the Apostle Paul, his life uh, on Galatians. On He has a two-volume commentary on Romans. This is by James D. D. G. Dunn, The Theology of Paul the Apostle. This is really worth having, his writings. This is a Reformed perspective on Paul. Paul and the, the uh, Outline of His Theology by Herman Rudabas. I've had this for many years. This one I have not read. Paul the Convert, the Apostolate, and the Apostasy of Saul the Pharisee by Alan F. Siegel. 
And this is the one I've had for many, many years. Uh, Paul, Apostle of the Heart Set Free by F. Beth Bruce. This is a good one, just a general introduction. If all of these, if I was going to choose anyone to read, read these two. Read Paul, the Apostle of the Heart of Set Free by F.F. F. Bruce, and read Paul, the Apostle of Liberty. Just read these two. The other ones, if you want more in-depth, more exhaustive, uh, I would start with this one, and then I would read Ben Worthington, and then I would read this one, and then check out N.T. Wright's new one. These are you could most people, I think most Christians could read those and, and benefit from them. So I want to just show these books so I can put them down the lower level and get them out of the way. I don't know when I'll download this video. It is still February the 28th. It is a Wednesday. It's 8, 12 at night. I'm sitting here having a cup of tea and I'm just kind of, maybe I'm getting kind of, uh, I'm getting kind of weirded out. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Uh, it's kind of like, I could talk about New Testament theology. I could talk about the Apostle Paul. I could go through Romans and Galatians, but there's nobody to talk to. There's nobody who's read, when I was, one reason why I stopped going to church is because even the teaching elders and ruling elders didn't know what I was talking about. I would come in and say, have you read N.T. Wright? Have you read, you know, F.F. F. Bruce? Have you studied the Epistle of Romans? And I would bring in all my commentaries and all my biblical studies and they would just look at me like, hey, you know, we just finished high school. Or the, the ministers were just too busy or they just felt freaked out by my over enthusiasm. So after a while, I just stopped going to church. Why go to church if you don't get any kind of feedback or any kind of fellowship or anybody talking to you or anybody want to sit down and let's hash out Pauline theology. Let's talk about his doctrine of justification by faith or his eschatology or talk about Paul's view of the work of the Holy Spirit and the conversion and sanctification of his people or why is covenant theology not biblical? If it is biblical, why? What is Paul's view of the law, the the uh, the Torah, and the view of the Christian life, and all these things I wanted to talk about? You know, I wanted to share, and nobody wanted to talk to me. Nobody wanted to read the books. You know, I would offer, hey, come over to my house, and you can we'll sit down and look at these books, and nobody took up any offer. So now. I just kind of said, okay, if that's the way it is in the visible church, I'll just stay home and <laughs> have a cup of tea, read my books, talk into a camera, make videos, write in my diary, write in my online diaries. If people come across my pathway who are interested in knowing what the Bible teaches, what is the life and the teachings of the Apostle Paul, I'm here, hey, but hey, nobody comes knocking, nobody comes to the door, nobody calls, nobody wants me, but it's fine, because hey, I'm in the will of God, this is God's plan for my life, so I just thought I'd show you these books on the Apostle Paul, I'll list them below, I wrote them out in my online diary, Crooked Fingers, and I'll download this video sometime in the near future. So until next time, uh, I'll sign off.